the boys hyped that World War One started. We're 18 and bored. I could see that. In 1914, you're probably just growing up on a farm. Like, who wouldn't want a free vacation to France? Us signing up uh, in the PALS battalion. What could go wrong? I'm assuming these are Europeans because, remember, the uh, U.S. didn't start uh, until later. Marching through the French countryside to the front line. This is going to be a great time. I get to I get to literally live in a hole with my best friend. Me and my bro just getting trench foot out here together. Recruitment officer forgot to mention the ter uh, torrential downpour. Oh, yeah, that's exactly what I was talking about. Well, at least I'm still with my bros. That's all that really matters at this point. Getting hit with mustard gas for the first time. Oh, what is this? Spicy wind? Uh, officer, we are going to storm through no man's land tomorrow. That should be nice. I kind of do want to get out of this. Witnessing the friend that I grew up with and known since for 14 years get blown up as soon as they get stepped out of the trench. That would be fun. Getting some protein. Uh, it's a dead rat. Uh, okay. Well, whatever you could do, I at least have these other bros watching an entire column of tanks advancing to my position. Keep in mind, too, this is <laughs> World War One. So back then, a lot of people had never seen a machine like this before, which I'm assuming would be awfully terrifying. Returning back home after the war with shell shock and uh, no means of treating it, uh, Fourth of July's are not fun anymore. Oh, so this person was an American. Have you seen those terrifying videos of people with, like, shell shock after World War One? I? I don't really want that. This is by the Yesterday Saga. Please go follow them. Here's another one by them. This one, Vikings about to raid some English monasteries. So we're talking the Viking time and around the thousand year period or thousand years ago English monks watching six four berserkers with axes charge their churches imagine me but there's two of me stacked on top of each other I could see why that'd be a little freaky north a uh, king of North Umbria uh, Vikings have landed on our shore uh -huh. uh, Vikings are outside Vikings enjoying the local cuisine they've pillaged a farm uh, fields and uh, possibly taking the local village people as well some poor soul getting uh blood eagles yes isn't that with it with the blunt weapon vikings return back to norway with their plunders chilling just having a blast this would have been nice with the homies i mean it'd be a little bit better the french king laughing at what happened to the english they probably love that up until normandy uh paris a few oh there it is paris a few years later uh yeah the vikings went everywhere a native american watching vikings dock their long shore on their ship they'd be clearly freaking out who are you people why have you come here they definitely would not be able to understand each other but again like i just said the vikings literally went everywhere they first started in scandinavia around the 8th century and in the 9th century they started going to these red zones realizing oh it's really nice to just jack these people's stuff and take it back then in the 10th century they landed in normandy sounds like d-day but with Vikings. And then all the green areas is where eventually Vikings did end up landing at some point, including, yes, Vinland, which is North America. That is why SpongeBob says, Happy Lee Ferrickson Day, since he technically founded the American continent way before Christopher Columbus. Napoleonic Wars as cats, Napoleon realizing his invasion of Russia has failed. Napoleon and the French army leaving Moscow because they ran out of food and they have to go all the way back. The Russian winter arrives and now they are freezing. That's uh, kind of sad, but uh, Russian soldiers watching the French freeze to death. The winter is doing their job for them. I thought for a second this is referring to the Russian soldiers eating the frozen French bodies. That was a dark thought. Russian ambushes French stragglers. Uh, they're slowly getting picked off as they're marching back to France. French soldiers running out of food. Obviously really wanting uh, more food at that time. Lost French soldiers genuinely <laughs> tweaking. <laughs> Um, yes, the Russians realizing they won the war, winter really, uh, came in clutch. Napoleon explaining to his army why he must go back to France immediately. He's abandoning them. That's really nice. Uh, Russians closing in on the remaining French soldiers. Okay, it's, that's a little intimidating to see them doing that. Wounded French soldiers plead with Russians. Why is this actually so, uh, dark and disturbing. I don't, I don't really want to, okay, let's not. I mean, they did technically win and deal a massive blow to Napoleon's army, but they did have to pretty much burn down their entire country to do so. Literal scorched earth policy. That was by Mad Wolf 475 please go follow. The next part, Napoleon returning from Russia with great news. He lost the war and half his army. That is great news. Coalition forces stream rolling Eastern and Central Europe all the way back to modern day France. Napoleon watching his entire empire crumble before him. Oh, is this when he gets sent to Alba. 
uh, Napoleon trying to train more recruits, but they're like young and un... Yeah, okay, coalition forces enter France. Once again, they're gonna try... This is like their seventh or sixth attempt at this point. There was a total of seven. There still is, I think, one more at least after this one. Napoleon doing everything he po can possibly to defend Paris, but that is obviously not gonna work. French citizens getting tired of Napoleon and the war. Uh, they were welcome... They were gonna welcome him back, though. Napoleon's advisors telling him to abdicate. He ain't hearing none of that. Obviously, as Napoleon is screaming like a cat here, uh, against Napoleon's command to fight Paris instead of surrender. Uh, yes, Napoleon finally realizing the war is lost, and he'll need to abdicate and get sent to uh, a different place. Elba, yeah. Napoleon being exiled to Elba. I think I was thinking of... I was confusing... Uh, Saint Helena. That was the last place he was sent to when he just died on the island. Obviously, the world would come to find out that Elba was not far enough for Napoleon. And I'm sure that's pretty much what we're going to see. Napoleon uh, swallowing the fact that he'll have to live uh, the rest of his life. It's basically his own island that he gets to... Yeah, that's a really good point. How sad can you really be? Because it's basically uh, an island where you can do whatever you want. The final part, the French king celebrating Napoleon's defeat. Oh, don't celebrate too fast. Just wait one second. Well, uh, he's going to escape Elba here. French citizens getting upset the king's leadership is poor they want napoleon back it's funny that they were like that like literally nine months beforehand or maybe a year napoleon escaping from the exile i like this song napoleon returning to france and everyone is gonna join his side are these are some of these cats ai generated it's almost a little bit i know that one isn't uh somehow napoleon convincing the king's uh soldiers to join him that was pretty crazy napoleon overthrowing the king and becoming emperor again just to have one last fight, literally all of Europe watching Napoleon take power. They literally just defeated him. <laughs> so they have to go and fight him again. Napoleon invades Belgium. Can you imagine that news? Imagine being one of the European monarchs at this time. And this dude that caused like absolute chaos for like a couple decades comes back into power after you thought he was gone. That's like return of the king. It's like the twist to a movie. It's like, oh my god, we had to fight this guy again. British forces watching, uh, waiting for Napoleon. They are outnumbered and it's been raining all day. Batter of Waterloo. This was obviously, this is, would come to be Napoleon's final defeat. Uh, Prussian forces pull up to troll the French. And uh, this is the seventh coalition French. Uh, the French are defeated at Waterloo. And now Napoleon's going to get sent to St. Helena, uh, realizing he lost and will have to abdicate, abdicate again. And now he gets to be sad. But there's going to be plenty of memes that he gets out of St. Helena. Uh, yeah, Napoleon realizing there's nothing you... I love that they referenced that. Thank you that they actually did the nothing you can do. Except, obviously, a cat version. Maybe he was depressed on this island because someone told him 200 years later he'd be depicted as a dancing cat on TikTok. Another one by the Yesterday Saga. This one about the 300 Spartans. Leonidas marching to Thermopylae with his 300 Spartans about to go and fight uh, a lot of scary Persians. Athenians watching the seas so the Persians can wait what I missed that oh watching the seas so the Persians can't go around them remember that this was the Greek world at the time around 500 BC the Persian Empire was extremely big as they entered over into the Greek islands Thermopylae was actually a bit in there Spartans taking a snack break at Thermopylae uh, there's only a few days oh they're a few days early oh good so they got to relax the Spartan scout discovering the hidden path that if discovered by the Persians will wipe them out oh I've seen this part in the movie the Spartans hauling it back to camp to warn Leonidas <laughs> Uh, is that a random mouse? The scout, uh, there's a hidden path behind us. Leonidas, well, we'll send a thousand Phoenicians to watch. Are you sure? Shouldn't we send some Spartans at least? Uh, it's not like they'll just run at the first sight. That Oh, goodness. Oh, bad. Okay, the Persians arrive at Thermopylae. They are, they're immortals. They are Persian uh, infantry. There are, uh, then there's Neil falling behind. Freaking Neil. The Spartans, uh, Persian envoy expecting them to surrender, but no. Oh, yeah, the Persians probably thought... They would just relax, but no. Leonidas, come and get them, throwing them off the cliffs. Pretty ep- oh, oh wow, I need more. The Spartans, after learning that they're gonna uh, be dining in Hades later tonight, that's gonna be really fun. They did kind of like that. The other Greeks, after they find out the same thing. Yeah, the Spartans were the only ones that- I mean, you know, I don't want to just disregard the other, you know, Greek city-states at the time. Obviously, the Spartans get all the glory, but there were others with them. There were 700 Thespians that also refused to leave and committed themselves to the fight. Also some slaves. But that's still only a thousand dudes going up against literally this empire. So easy to forget just how massive they really were. The Persian scouts, after finding the Spartan uh, exercising naked and grooming each other's hair, uh, that's- uh, I- yeah, oh, okay, King Zerg send the mediocre, not-so-good Persian infantry. Make quick work of those pesky Greeks. The Spartans, after forming their shield wall, 
they knew they were going to be absolutely safe. See, that's got to be AI generated, right? There's no way that cat is actually Persian. <laughs> Persians, after seeing the impenetrable Spartan shield wall, Persian soldiers abandoning the battlefield at that time while getting spears in the back. Meanwhile, the Spartans, a few hours later, stacking the dead bodies to form a literal human shield of corpses, basically. That's really nice to say out loud. The Spartans, no longer seeing the sun, it's not an eclipse, it's a barrage of Persian arrows. Oh, that's going to be also cool. Spartans forming their, their formation that blocks everything the Spartans after surviving thousands of arrows being uh, fired on them again it's still not going to end well for the Spartans but they're doing great at, at for now King Xerxes once he found out uh the barrage was yes I'm just imagining like is there a cat that could look more like King Xerxes well not the way he actually probably looked in reality I'm thinking more of the very zesty one from the 300 movie they definitely took some liberty with that character design the immortals after finding out they're not so immortal I, I think always of like the Civ 5 unique units that you can play with the Greek, the Persian immortals, some Greek shepherds discovering the uh, hidden past to the uh, Spartans. Uh, King Xerxes, uh, hey yo, there's a hidden pass, uh, give me some monies. Okay, so finally he's going to be able to defeat the 300 Spartans, uh, and after betraying his fellow Greeks for just a little bit of gold, I don't think this guy was actually a hunchback either like he was in the movie. The immortals traveling uh, to the pass at night getting behind the Spartans to finally be able to, yeah, they were definitely cheapy cheapy chaba chaba uh, in at this moment, I, if that's if that's even a verb. Oh, is that a verb now? Wonder what happens next? Find out next time on Cat History. This one's by History Cat Memes, Mongolia ready to invade China. Oh, we have one about the Mongolian Empire, so they're gonna have, these cats are gonna be extremely successful with their, uh, yeah, some Chinese guards seeing the Mongol horde invade. <laughs> They're probably not excited about that. Some poor Chinese villagers getting attacked by Mongols. Uh, I like how they're screaming, but also having fun at the same time. Emperor, the Jin Dynasty, the Mongols are attacking. Probably not going to go too well for the Jin Dynasty. Uh, spoiler alert. Mongols conquering all of China. And now I'm going to assume they're going to turn now westward to Europe. Because that's, or India, actually. Uh, I'm not, ex Mongols expanding west towards Europe. There you go. I like how this is the theme for the Mongols. Uh, Europeans seeing Mongolian horde invade. Ah, oh, man, but I wish we kind of covered a little bit of their journeys in the Middle East as well. Mongols steamrolling Eastern Europe. Well, that is kind of the point where the Mongols stopped, though. Technically, Poland stopped them. Uh, Asian, uh, Asia growing. Asia seeing the best economic growth in centuries. And that was by History Cat Memes. They do ultimately take out a lot of this stuff, but this is about the extent the Mongols got. I would have loved to have seen the Mongol siege of Baghdad at this time, specifically portrayed by cats, obviously. That was crazy. Or some of the other invasions here in Pakistan. Why wasn't there a Genghis Khan cat? Please go follow and subscribe all these accounts. I love how much history they're teaching to people. And thank you to the patrons. You can go to the link in the description down below to patreon.com to support me. John Queen Denver. Best Jack girl. Cravens. Annoying I friends. can't sleep without Drew's voice. Inquisitors, Henrik, Frederick, Dublin, Dublin Drew, it's your dad back with the Dub, milk. beautiful Look Megan, Carmel S, Amateur Archaeology, Seventh Year This, the I Mexican Love You, Luxembourg Lover, Tamron, and Zany Boy.